this section we're going to talk about the effectiveness NTU method. Well, the log mean temperature difference method is really useful for calculating things like surface area and heat transfer rates if the inlet and outlet temperatures are known. If the outlet temperatures are not known, the effectiveness NTU method is much more convenient. So let's get some derivations out of the way first. The effectiveness is the actual heat transfer rate over the maximum possible heat transfer rate. So as you can see, the effectiveness has a limit of 1. The heat transfer rate between the two fluids can be defined by an energy balance on the hot fluid or an energy balance on the cold fluid. Notice that we've put things in terms of the heat capacity rates, which as you recall is the mass flow rate times the specific heat. The maximum possible heat transfer rate is given by C min times the temperature of the hot fluid at the inlet minus the temperature of the cold fluid at the outlet. That would be the case if the hot stream was cooled down to the temperature of the cold stream at the inlet or at its inlet. Um, so this would represent the largest driving force for heat transfer. The C min is the minimum of the two heat capacity rates. The C min is the limiting factor. So for any heat exchanger, we can define the effectiveness as a function of the NTU and the ratio of the minimum to maximum heat capacity rates. NTU stands for the number of transfer units and it's a dimensionless parameter. It's defined by the overall heat transfer coefficient times the area available for heat transfer over the minimum heat capacity ratio. Calculating the effectiveness essentially gives you a way to rate the performance of the heat exchanger and calculating the number of transfer units gives you the ability to size the heat exchanger. Table 11.3 in your book allows you to, for a given heat exchanger type, parallel flow, counter flow, etc., calculate the effectiveness based on the number of transfer units and the specific heat ratio. Table 11.4 allows you to work backwards and calculate the NTU based on the effectiveness and the specific heat ratio. Or we can use a graph. Um, we'll be focusing on parallel and counter flow heat exchangers, but there are other such charts for other types of heat exchangers in your book. Well, I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching.